Hey, what's up everybody? It's TR with Earth Angel Mushrooms. So I wanted to make a video, give you guys an update on uh, something new I have going on. So I have a brand new lab that I'm sitting in right now. It's, it's uh, at my other location in Bourbon, Missouri. I made a video a while ago, but it's been on the back burner for a while. Um, but I wanted to have more control of cultures, G1, spawn, um, and I wanted to separate it away from the other stuff, so I did. Uh, and I'm gonna go over how I uh, designed it, and you can see that it is a little room. And I don't have the light put in yet. Just the one light over my new hood. Um, but I wanted it to be little because a little room can generate a lot of, uh, like I said, cultures. Generation one spawn. I wanted to have complete control of all of that stuff. And also I started uh, screwing around with uh, liquid culture about three months ago. So a lot of people have been talking about it. Andrew Reed, for those of you guys who watch his channel, um, he talks a lot about liquid culture. So I figured I would jump on the bandwagon. And there's a lot of benefits to that. So you'll see a lot of uh, liquid culture going. Um, so about three months ago, I started uh, traveling a bunch of different liquid culture stuff. Um, I'll go over that a little bit. But anyway, back to my new lab. So I wanted to go over some considerations that you guys should think about when you are designing your clean room slash lab. Now, production blocks, um, you don't need near as much control with production blocks. Of course you do, but you can get away with a lot more in regards to production blocks than you can with spawn. So with Spawn, I wanted a, uh, I wanted massive control. And for those of you who know me in real life, I'm a disorganized human being, to say the least. I'm not uh, super regimented in the way that I do things. I'm disorganized. But when it comes to the lab, there is a switch that goes off in my brain, and I become. I don't even know the proper word. I guess the analogy would be, you've heard people say, a Nazi. Of course, I'm not really a Nazi. I don't believe in that stuff. I have to say that because it's on video. Um, but I become hardcore, organized, regimented, because I have suffered pain um, in regards to when you make mistakes in this room. It, completely screws you over. Um, so you only have to go through a certain amount of pain before you start adjusting. And so this room is a culmination of lots of pain and lots of knowledge. Um, so I have my other lab, of course, in Pacific, where we are doing the production blocks. And then we have a system in place in which we will do uh, regular spawn there so subsequent generations but of course um, cultures in generation one I cannot stress enough how strict you need to be with yourself um, cultures are not the same from person to person and someone selling cultures out of their kitchen or their basement or some random room in their house is not the same. Um, and the knowledge. You think that because a culture grows out uncontaminated that it is good to go. That is not the case. That is not the case and it takes thousands of cultures before you start seeing trends and picking up on that um, the nuances and the art behind um, the cultivation, but more so culture work. Um, I can't stress that enough, 
how big of a stickler you need to be with yourself, with the people that work for you. If you guys are um, have employees or going to potentially get employees, that it is no joke. And it all starts with the culture. And there are few people that I will get cultures from. Um, because most people think a culture is a culture is a culture. That's not the case. Just because a culture is not contaminated does not mean that it's good to go. Anyway, I'll stop my rant and get back to that later. But the new lab. So um, Eric Myers, who you guys know, is one of my good friends. What's up, Eric? Um, he started selling HEPAs. And of course, I got the friend discount. So. Um, I got two of the three by fours. So this one, so no one talks smack about my construction skills. I am not a good uh, handyman. I just get, get things done, thrown together. Um, so anyway, got filters from Eric. So I got two 3x4 filters initially. Here's one of them that I haven't put in yet. And you can see that there is a seam down the middle. We subsequently got the 3x4s that do not have that seam. I recommend getting the ones without the seam if you're going to get a 3x4. Um, just because it makes the air flow even. Will they work? Yeah, they'll work. Will they work as good as a 3x4 without a seam? No. Uh, so let me get back to how I designed this. So I made a video when I built those. I brought one of those from Pacific, Missouri, my other place, and put it here. So I have this one, when I'm in here, will be circulating air, circulating air. And I have this one. I know it's a little bit dark. I don't have all the lights put in. I'll try to get to where you guys can see me. Um, so this one, I did everything on the outside of the room. One, makes it way quieter in here. Two, I utilize all of the space in here. There's not as much stuff in here. Um, and you don't want a lot of stuff in your lab. It ends up getting in the way. Um, so I plumbed everything on the outside. One thing that you'll learn as you do this, um, in regards to positive pressure and then your flow hood. So, you're getting a lot more scrubbing action. That's what you want whenever you're circulating. Positive pressure is not meant to necessarily clean out the room. Positive mm -hmm. pressure is meant to keep stuff out of the room and let your filters scrub and scrub and scrub and scrub and scrub. Also, organization of the airflow. So if you have a filter like this, and you can see the top, you point it out. Air is coming out, and it's just doing this. Will it work? Yeah. But what's better is if you design your lab or your clean room to where the air goes out to the back of the room, circulates in a duct that you've sealed up, and comes back in the room. So it's pulling that whole column of air from the filter, all right, all the way to the back of the room. And you can see, that's not my only coarse filter, it's the wrong size. Um, there's another filter in the duct right over the fan. Um, so, the more organized your airflow, it goes back to the same thing in your grow room. Um, you want organization of airflow, and in here it's very important. So we are pushing air out right off my right shoulder there. It's going to the back of the room, up, out, and around. So the whole room is going like this. So with this fan, with this fan so three by four, you have all of those exchanges an hour. Um, a lot of people ask me, where do you get fans? My go-to for getting fans, the cheapest you can get them and the most I mean, the technology for these fans is ancient. They last forever. Um, go to a scrapyard. 
So scrap yards, one of their big products is air conditioners, because there's copper in there. So they get a lot of air conditioners. Um, and they don't have anything, the fan is not worth anything to them, and they last forever. So you get a fan, size it for your filter, and clean it up, put it in there. It's before the filter, so it doesn't have to be immaculately clean. Of course, I try to get them immaculately clean, but just because there's a little dust left on it or something, it should be filtered out. Um, anyway, so the cheapest fans that you can get are from the scrapyard, and they're high quality fans. They came out of an air conditioner. So, and furthermore, you know how many CFMs the fan is going to produce by the tonnage of the AC. So the standard is 400 cubic feet per minute per ton. So if this comes off of a five ton, you know that's 2,000 cubic feet per minute. Now keep in mind that whenever you put pre-filters on, that reduces the flow. So you want to get a little bit bigger of a fan than what your filter uh, would, would call for. And then it'll, as it drops the CFM because of the pre-filters, it's gonna slow it down and put it right on. And then you can, of course, check the flow, which I have not checked the flow on this one. Um, anyway, so positive pressure and scrubbing. You want a lot of scrubbing because um, it's taking things out and then your positive pressure keeps things out. So as you open the door, stuff's gonna flow out. Stuff's not gonna get in. It's gonna allow it to continue to scrub and scrub and scrub and scrub. And that's what you want. Um, I have paint on the walls. It's my favorite Sherwin-Williams pre-catalyzed epoxy. It's rock hard, waterproof, cleanable. Everything in here is sealed up, so I um, put quarter round in all the corners and then copped everywhere, so this room is completely sealed up. The bottom of which the baseboards, I have yet to get all of them in, but I caulked the seam where the drywall meets the floor. I put these, uh, I don't know what type of tiles they are, it's not ceramic, it's the stick-on kind, but they're cleanable, washable, chemical resistant for bleach, because you're gonna be cleaning this room a lot. Um, so anyway, uh, the major points of this video that I wanted to make is one, give you guys an update on my new lab. You know, I'm gonna be doing uh, all my culture work and all my G1s and the liquid culture that I'm using. Um, just briefly covered that I've been screwing around with liquid culture. So far, it's working great. I'll make more videos on liquid culture as I go along. Um, I'll show you. We've got lots of liquid culture. Probably have five gallons worth in here. I'm cooking some over there right now in my pressure cooker and my camp stove. It's a little warm in here. Um, but so far the liquid culture has been great. Um, plate check every batch so you know if it's good or bad. It's incredibly easy to plate check liquid culture as opposed to plate check and spawn. It's a royal pain in the butt seal the bags and get the grain out onto a plate. Um, also, uh, my refrigerator, I decided to put it outside the room. It's pretty closed up. Um, it's not going to get a lot of stuff in there. Plus, the cultures and stuff that I put in there are going to be bagged and then put in the refrigerator. All of the spawn that I make here, I uh, will bring it to my operation in Pacific, Missouri. So, um, I'm pretty happy. Uh, and stoked that I have all of this control now of all of the Generation 1, all of my cultures. Um, so, when you go to design your lab, keep those things in mind. I chose the biggest filter that I, can, that I had access to. If you can afford a four foot filter, don't go with a one foot filter. Why would you do that? It's ridiculous. You want as much clean air space as you possibly can get. It makes no sense to me why you can set up a, a, a two-foot filter if you can afford a, and a four-foot filter. It, it boggles my mind how some people will use a little bitty filter. 
I want as much sterile air as possible. I want as much advantage brought to my side as possible. Um, let's see, what else can I cover here? I guess that's about it. Um, seal up all your seams. Another thing that I added for more control is plexiglass all the way around so that column of air, nothing's coming in from the top. Um, it's the column of air is coming out here and I know from this seam, which goes pretty much over my table, that is sterile air on the inside of the plexiglass. Plexiglass is expensive, a two by four sheet with 70 bucks at Lowe's. Is it worth it? Well, I bought it, so I think it's worth it. Any advantage that I can possibly get, I am going to take advantage of. I'm going to use it if I can afford it. Um, so anyway, hope everybody is uh, hanging in there through the COVID. Um, if you need blocks, shoot me an email, earthangelmushrooms at gmail.com. If you need spawn, earthangelmushrooms at gmail.com. Hope everybody has a good weekend. I'll try to make some more videos for you all. Have a great weekend. Stay motivated. Keep growing mushrooms, and we will talk to you later.